If we think about the post-war generation of American physicists, those who had participated in the Manhattan Project and grown up under their tutelage, pragmatism, the, the simple application and determined application of calculation and making new devices dominated the concern of physicists. Physicists were proud of not asking philosophical questions in the American context. They saw themselves as fundamentally different from the questioning, philosophically inflected physicists of the 1920s and 1930s. They weren't interested in Einstein's questions about the nature of reality or how much order there was in God's original choice about the, what structured the universe. They didn't want to hear about Heisenberg on Heraclitus or Niels Bohr on Kierkegaard. They were after making things, calculating things, bringing the modern world into tune with what they could do with their minds, quantum mechanics, and the burgeoning use of computers. What we've seen in the discussion with David Kaiser is that there was a group counterculturally inflected that came out of that generation and wanted to bring fundamental questions of quantum mechanics back into the center of consideration. They did not think that you could push aside what entanglement meant, what it meant to have a system, what it meant to have a measurement. And now, in the current world, we're seeing yet another step in these developments. We're seeing these questions of entanglement go from being reintroduced into a philosophically modulated notion of physics and brought into the laboratory and even beyond the laboratory into an imagined and in small bits realized new technology. To help us understand that transition from principle to laboratory to application, I'd like to introduce Misha Lukin, who's a colleague here at Harvard, who does experimental work at the very small scale, looking at the possibilities of quantum cryptography, quantum money, quantum computation. He's one of a new generation of physicists, applied and pure, who are thinking about the way in which entanglement could lead to fundamental new ways of understanding the world, where maybe, for instance, Bell's theorem would be not just a proof against Einsteinian locality, but Bell's theorem, as you looked at separated particles that were entangled, the results of that experiment would actually tell you if some snooper spy had actually done a measurement and intruded on communication between the two observers at the two ends of this exchange. So you can start to think about entanglement and even Bell's theorem as actually part of a cryptographic process or of a security alert that somebody was watching in exchange. The idea of entangled systems is also a very dense way of packing information. At the heart of an ordinary computer, you simply have decisions that are yes or no, up or down. In a quantum superposition of up and down, there are all sorts of different states that might be encoded into the up and down, because something can be both up and down at the same time in quantum mechanics. And that possibility opens up the technological door of allowing us to think about storing vastly more amounts of information in a quantum system and processing many different attempts or tries at decoding or calculating the traveling salesman problem or of doing new kinds of analysis of very complicated problems involving many different gravitating bodies or different particles. It opens up a whole new way of thinking about a computer if you can explore many different possibilities simultaneously, because that fundamentally is what quantum mechanics is about.